this is a perfect opportunity in the situation that we're in with the COVID-19 to grow your own veggies. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like growing your own stuff. It tastes amazing. Like two different worlds from buying stuff at the grocery store, right? Yeah. Um, here are actually one of the green onions that my mom has planted in a uh, jar from other green onions. And as you can tell, they grew actually quite well. She just chopped them because they're growing a little too quite well. <laughs> So the cool thing about green onions is that you can grow them right on the windowsill in the kitchen and as you use it, you just leave it be and it'll come back like in another week and a half or two. Uh, they say that you can do the same thing with garlic. I'm not so much on the farming side, that would be more our lovely assistant, mm -hmm. but um, she does a really good job of uh, taking care of her um, plants that we use. For, for, our, for our cooking pleasures. <laughs> <laughs> so Maddie said... Um, Thank you for sharing about the rice because she always burns her rice. Yes, I always used to burn the damn rice. So, here's a funny story. <laughs> well, I'm cooking, right? Um, when I met my wife, uh, <laughs> I used to cook for myself because it was only me, myself, and I, right? And so, because it was only me, myself, and I, I only knew how to make um, enough to cook for myself. And so when I was taught, I wasn't taught that one cup, you know, rice for every two cups of water. I was just taught the grandma way, where they just grab a handful of rice, that's enough to feed you, and then kind of put some water in there, and that's it, right? And so it was usually hit or miss, but um, I had perfected the science of making my own Mexican rice, and, and that concept goes for both. So you can do Mexican rice as well, or, or Hispanic rice, whatever you want to call it, but um, the only difference is that... Uh, Watch, I'll show you guys. Hold on. The only difference between white rice and Hispanic rice is this. Mm. You want to keep it simple, you put a tablespoon of this in your Hispanic rice, and you get that perfect red color. It's moist, and it's never going to mess up. It's called, uh, it's, the company's Nor, and it's um, chicken bouillon. That's all it is. And they have a red one, too, so you can get the perfect red color that everybody likes. I'd like to do a shout out to my brother for teaching us how to do the rice. Oh yeah. So Uncle Tutu. Yeah, tell the story. Do you remember the story? No, I don't remember any story. So Uncle Tutu works at is it Panda Express? Uh, yeah. He, it he's is. worked at all of them. But anyway. Yeah. <laughs> one day we had a party and uh, they asked me to make the rice, right? Because my my wife had tasted the rice at the time, but she didn't know that I could only make it for myself. So I didn't know how to make rice for 150 people. Mm -hmm. And so he's like watching me make these pots one by one. He's like, what the hell are you doing, bro? <laughs> like I'm making rice for the party, right? He's all, dude, just measure it out this way. And ever since then, I've done it. I've never had it burn. And it's always nice and moist and not like all messed up. And you're going to see it. So when Gabby's done, she'll show you what to look for at the end when it's cooked. All right, so back to our, our chopping. So um, all this stuff is just gonna be a rough chop. And uh, it all has to do with the presentation at the end. So it'll look like you um, slaved over this dish, but in reality, it's only gonna take us like 10 minutes, yeah, if that. Um, so I cut uh, green onions first, and then uh, we're going to... Uh -oh. Yeah, these make bad prank, but I'll, I'll be I'll be quick about it. So anyhow, um, you just want to cut an onion in half. I'll be right back. Gabby, yeah, we'll be right back. She's gonna go check on her chicken. And so you cut your onion in half, whoop, uh, peel the outer skin. And again, uh, if you want to avoid crying, you want to do this ahead of time. You have time to do it. You're just gonna stick it in cold water, uh, ice water, and it'll it'll take away that that burn and it won't make you cry. You'll be able to handle it this time. Um, I've worked with the onion a, lot, a long time, so for me, it's like nothing. But anyways, um, so you cut your onion in half, and then you're just gonna um, cut out. It's gonna look like that. Simple. It's gonna all break down in the wok anyways, so it doesn't matter, right? And it's gonna look like um, it came out of a Chinese restaurant or some Asian restaurant. You can dice it if you like, 
But uh, one thing I gotta tell you about the wok, the food cooks fast, it's super fast. So what you normally would take to cook in a conventional pan, in a wok, is like turbo speed. Um, and, you, and you don't even need hardly any oil. So the wok we have, we also bought at Walmart, um, they're five bucks. If you haven't bought one, you need to get one, like yesterday. Those things are so nice and so fast, that thing's durable. Like, I watch these guys on the on YouTube when they're, where they're like in India and they're cooking on these woks. There's nothing fancy about them. I mean, you can buy a fancy one, they're like up to 60 bucks. But um, this particular wok is $5. Bought it at Walmart, it's been good. That thing's like solid. How's the chicken? Looking pretty chickeny. <laughs> Alright, so um, our next ingredient is going to be garlic. Mm -hmm. And I don't know where our lovely assistant got this garlic, but. Yeah. Jeez. I'm going to show you guys. This is ridiculous. What's so ridiculous about it, Dad? The size. <laughs> that is one clove of garlic. Uncle Mario said hello. Hi, Uncle, Uncle Mario! Mario. And that's just one clove? That's just one yeah. clove. Ridiculous. Where did you end up getting it? Love the assistant? Oh, the Walmart. Yeah, we, we kind of pretty much stick to the Walmart. I'm going to have to talk to the manager down there and see if he can help us out with some stuff. Because uh, we're always giving them plugs, right? And we, we love them. They're pretty nice people. They treat us good. Um, you know how a lot of people talk about big box stores and um, all this craziness about how nobody knows anybody there. Well, at our neighborhood Walmart, it's uh, the people from the neighborhood work there. So yeah. they know us. We go in there and say hi to everybody, the manager, the guy in the deli section, the guy in the meat section. Okay, so back to the garlic. Rough chop. Do not, do not, do not make this fine because no. the wok is like at 8 million degrees and this will burn and it will ruin the whole dish. Hey, really? Rough chop. What's next, guys? Hmm. So, is there anything new lately? Um. Yeah. Um. The new goosebumps, actually. Goosebumps. It's coming back. Yeah. Another one. Yeah. What's What's the new one gonna be? Did, did they say it, or it's just like a teaser, like we're gonna bring this back again? I think it's just I we're gonna bring this back again. I believe so. But. Speaking of goosebumps, um, what is your favorite childhood like movies or shows that you want to bring back for a second round? Ooh, so that's a good good um, topic with me. So the very first movie that I got to see as a kid was uh, The Empire Strikes Back, Star Wars. So I'm a huge, huge, huge Star Wars fan. Uh, we stood in line for like two hours, and I didn't even know what a movie was, and I'm like. Why are we standing in line, Dad? And he's like, you'll see, this is the greatest movie that ever was, right? And we went to go see it. And then Star Trek came out where um, I think Dr. Mr. Spock was going to die. Yeah. Or he died and they sent him to Earth or something. Anyways, that was the second movie I saw. So I thought, at the time, I thought that was better than Star Wars. But now, now I know. Um, uh, but yeah, that's that's the, the tall memory that I have. Uh, what about you, lovely assistant? Um... I think that they've already brought back all my child memories, my cartoon shows. They brought back the Nickelodeon gang, like Hey Arnold or, you know, Angry Beavers. They're all going to come back. So I'm pretty excited about that. That really is pretty exciting. The next ingredient on the list is ginger. So a lot of people are not big fans. Um, you don't have to be, but... Uh, if you can't find fresh ginger in your uh, grocery store, they have ground ginger inside of these little jars uh, from McCormick. And uh, they work just as well. But um, I personally prefer fresh ginger, right? Mm -hmm. And so they always laugh at me because I go to the grocery store and the ginger is like six ninety nine for a pound, right? And I don't need a pound of ginger. I only need like a piece this big, right? Yeah. So I, I break off the little piece. I put the label on it. I go to the rest of the line. And that, that little piece will last us a week. Because we only slice off very, very minimal slices off of that ginger. And the, the flavor is powerful. It really is, actually. So you want to kind of keep that to a minimum. Mm -hmm. Even uh, and out for the rest of your dishes. The next ingredient is going to be 
um, dried jalapenos. Oh my god. Okay, so these guys um, are hot. <laughs> really, really hot. Especially when you fry them in the, in the wok, it'll um, put the flavor throughout the whole dish. But I, I, my personal opinion is that it makes the dish. Uh, it gives it that little kick, and it makes all the flavors that are married in there um, pop. It really does. Um, what is your favorite kind of chili? Like that's hot. Uh, I like this one, but there's other ones out there. Um, I don't know if I'm going to say this right. I don't want to offend anybody or anything, okay? But I feel that our Asian brothers and sisters are very similar to Hispanics in that we use a lot of spices. So um, people in the south of Mexico use a lot of chiles. Mm -hmm. There's thousands of chiles. And everybody has a different kind of uh, mole. And we'll make mole one day, but... Uh, mm -hmm. And, and what we're similar in is that they also use the spice as well. And so, um, even though the flavors are not the same, uh, the concept is basically the same. And so, uh, that's, that's why I like Chef Chang, because now um, he discovered uh, Taco Sal Pastor, and he's putting his own twist on them at Momofuku in New York. Um, I feel like the littlest and the wrinkliest ones, I feel like those ones are spiciest ones. But do you like those better than those, or...? Which ones do you like? Mm -hmm. I don't know. There's different types I like. I know that our lovely assistant likes this, this one. It's called the chiltepin. Mm -hmm. It's a little round uh, chile. It's like about that big. And, and they it has the same color as these. And you'll find them in the in the grocery store in the Hispanic aisle. Um, they'll be on the spice rack with the white, red, and green label that you can't miss. Um, and they're called chiltepin. And then the next ingredient Carrots. Carrots. Uh, so we don't have to chop the carrots because they're somebody already, already yeah they're shredded. Already, yeah they're shredded. <laughs> so um, the reason we use shredded is for presentation purposes only. It, you can put them in there however you like, but um, it looks sharp when you put these in there. Oh, Kayla said that she loves mole. Yeah, Miss Kayla, we're gonna do some mole just for you. And then uh, the next one is gonna be snow peas. So these are in the same aisle with the carrots. They're right next to each other. You just kind of walk in there. It's right in, as you walk in the door. Grab that sucker and put them in your cart. And then you go to the meat section, grab your meat. And then go to the sauce section, grab your sauce. And you're out the door. Quick and simple, right? I feel like it's a healthy dish to actually do. And it's pretty healthy because um, there's very minimal oil. How much oil do we usually put in there, Kat? Uh, usually a capful. Cap full of oil. So um, you can use... Um, Sesame oil, if you want to be traditional about it, but sesame oil burns really, really fast. It really does. So we just use regular vegetable oil from, you know, the Walmart. Walmart. <laughs> Alright, uh, so go ahead and get that going. And, uh, so Kayla said authentic, not out of the box like me. <laughs> well, I mean, um, most of the restaurants use uh, sesame um, seed oil or peanut oil but um, we have learned um, to adapt to the flavors that we like so to me it gives it a burnt flavor and it and, and you can tell so now that we've we've cooked um, these dishes all the time in our house uh, we've noticed that when we go to um, Chinese food uh, for dinner you can taste if the chef was seasoned or not because um, his food tastes burnt. Even though the food doesn't look burnt, it, it, it tastes burnt because you can taste the oil. So, and then the last ingredient we got is this uh, broccoli. So, um, a lot of people don't like broccoli. Kids hate broccoli. But, um, this isn't only one of the dishes that Gabby learned how to cook with, but um, she learned how to eat vegetables with this. So, once it's all done, it looks like a rainbow, and when they taste it, because it has those peppers in it, it gives it a nice little kick, and it's pleasing to the palate. So, uh, I don't have any problems with her eating vegetables at all, because we started her with stir fry. And now she cooks it, so she asks for it on her own. We don't have a lot of meat dishes all the time anymore, because she likes to be healthy, and she likes to have her veggies. And it, again, this is just a, a rough chop, so... Um, you want to have some trees. That's all. That's all we're looking for here. 
So we just cut the head off. And you're welcome to cut the rest of the stem. There's no um, difference. I personally don't like it. Just because, again, we're going for that presentation, right? We want that wow factor for when your guests come over. They're going to be like, wow, look at this. Wow, look at that. It looks so good. Who taught you how to make this? Gabby and Roger. <laughs> super, super easy. So I think that it's going to take us longer to talk about it than what it actually is to cook it. And so um, because the wok burns so hot, it's, it's literally like a three-minute deal inside of there. Um, just put them in, kind of saute them a little bit, and you'll see. Um, because if you leave them more than five minutes, they will be soggy. And then that presentation just went down the, the drain. Um, now, another thing that we're cooking before we put our veggies in the wok is the uh, chicken. So, um, Gabby went to go check on the chicken, it's on the grill. And so, um, we can cook it in the wok. Uh, a lot of the restaurants cook the chicken first in the wok, and then they remove it, and then they put their veggies in, and then they remove that, and then they put all their sauces in together, and then they put everything back in the wok. I hate that. I've seen thousands and thousands and thousands of shows where they constantly remove whatever's in there, and then they put the other stuff and cook it, and then they really remove it, and then they're with their little spoon on the sauces. Um, I like to cook my veggies first, then our chicken's already done. It's got these nice grill marks. It's beautiful. We cut it all up on our cooking board, and then we just throw it in the wok, and it's done, right? And uh, again, it's for a presentation. And I feel like when they cook the meats in the wok, it doesn't have the flavor that it does off the grill. So um, if you have time and you want to put them on a barbecue grill, that's even better than anything else that you can do. Slowly. Okay, so show them the, you can, you can pan over to, to Gabby now. Okay. So Gabby's going to um, show you guys how to hit it in the wok. And so you want to get the oil evenly throughout the wok because um, those side walls is where the heat comes from and it's like a little oven in there. So once she throws all her veggies in, everything's going to like go really, really fast. Okay. Choose your veggies, caps. Nice even coat. So we're going to get started with the onions. Sweetheart, pass or remove the oil so you don't spill it. And um, thanks to Patrick, we're going to show how the food is made now so that you guys have an idea and, and you, you won't mess it up. But even this dish, you can't mess it up. It's really, really easy and like I said, it's really, really fast. So what Daddy's gonna do is um, start sauteing those flavors, and that's the base because the onions and the garlic and that ginger is what give it that wow in your mouth. So you want to make sure that those release all their juices prior to putting anything else in there. Any other questions for right now? Well, she's getting that going. Also, um, you want to put hard vegetables first. So anything that's hard, like uh, carrots, if they're going to be solid, or um, like the broccoli, all that stuff goes first. Okay, uh, the snow peas um, go last. So believe it or not, um, cause because it's so hot and so fast, uh, they'll, they'll render down really quickly. Now, because we're using uh, Brown ginger, she's only going to put a sprinkle in there. There you go, Kevin. Oh, just a pinch to show them. Just put her. <coughs> and that's it. That little sprinkle, oh my goodness. I was choking over it. Water brings up a good point. So uh, it's starting to <coughs> release. <it. coughs> Excuse me, it's the peppers. It's starting to release its juices now. And um, fair warning on the peppers. 
you will choke like I am if you're not ready for it. So you want to put your veggies in quick <coughs> to tone that down a little bit. Sorry, it's just the peppers are that. I know, it's a lot. Now, your onions one, your carrots one next. And you just want to dump in the whole bag. Just stir it all together. Maybe it was a little too much peppers. <laughs> there your smoke piece. You want to flip them, flip all the stuff together. So you want to marry, <clears throat> marry it all together, so it's nice and colorful in there. <coughs> Woo! Yeah. Mm. I'll grab it. See? And now she's put her veggies in there. It's kind of toned down. Now the next thing that we want to do is start adding our flavor. So our first base, <coughs> first base is oyster sauce. These come key. You're just gonna go around that walk one time, and that's it. It doesn't have to be over exaggerated, it doesn't have to be drenched in there because we want those colors to pop. The next one is uh, poison sauce, <clears throat> also leekum key. Okay, same thing. Just gonna go around one time. That's it. <clears throat> and we save the soy sauce for last. So once we add our chicken, we're gonna add our soy sauce. Now, the thing about soy sauce, there's eight million of them. Okay, soy sauce to me is a personal preference. I I'm not to the level yet where I can taste the difference. But um, I happen to like Walmart stuff, so I'm I'm going with theirs. Um, can you take over for a little bit? Yeah, go grab chicken. So Gabby's gonna go grab her chicken, and as you can see, uh, this stuff's starting to get soggy. So you're gonna want to cook on medium heat. You don't want to be on high heat because by the time you chop up your chicken. This thing will be burnt. Kayla says that you guys shop like me. Or like her. <laughs> we don't like to be all up in the store all day, Miss Kayla. And people, they drive me crazy. Especially right now. We had this lady the other day. Woo! And uh, she was all hacking up a lung on all the cans. And then she touched them and she's like, oh no, I don't want this one. Right? And so she's, she's hacking away. And... Uh, On. And Lord Jesus. Okay, so we're gonna show you what the rice is supposed to look like. Okay. Well that cooks. So this rice is done. Now what we're looking for is when you see these little holes, see the see the, I don't know if you guys can catch those holes in there. When you start seeing holes at the top of the rice, that rice is done. There's enough moisture at the bottom to hold it and it will go away, it won't be soggy. But that's 100% how it's always supposed to be. Now, if you want to take it one step further, um, a lot of our Asian brothers and sisters wash the rice first because they don't like the starchiness of it. But um, I like my rice sticky, so I don't I don't rinse. But they rinse before they do that. How's the chicken looking? I'll take that for me. What do you think about that? So there's your chicken, right? Nice presentation, nice grill marks. We're just gonna chop that up on the cutting board real quick while Gabby stirs up the stir fry. And then uh, we'll put it all together. And then our dish is done. Easy peasy. Go ahead and do that. I'll give you the chicken in a second. Thank you. So believe it or not, this dish feeds like eight people. You saw how much uh, vegetables I put in there, right? It was literally like almost nothing. So, 
because they're all like uh, a little army and they all make up a team, um, it looks like a lot when it's served. And that's uh, how Chinese food restaurants get away with um, charging us so much. Because when it comes out, it looks like there's a mountain of food. But in reality, this whole dish is probably uh, about 10 bucks. This whole dish is probably about ten dollars. So, so if you're on a budget, you need to do something quick, easy, presentable. This is it, man. And you can't beat these flavors. You guys are gonna see in a second. So I'm just gonna cut Gabby's chicken so she can put it in there. And this is already cooked. So um, we like to do it right at the point that it's just like perfectly cooked because. Uh, we're using a uh, thin sliced chicken breast and the reason we like thin sliced chicken breast is because you can cook all these in less than five minutes so if you have your significant other who invited everybody over uh, they can be out on the grill cooking these uh, really quick and then uh, once they're done you'll be done with yours on all you got are you gonna do is uh, put it together man that's some good stuff Hey! How to, how to taste it. How to taste it. <laughs> Don't staff get a little bit of chicken? <laughs> Chubby! You're gonna get it right now! You said staff gets some chicken. Or some food. Staff gets some food. Staff eats first? Yes. Well, it's because we're taste testing, but you're over there mixing vegetables. You said taste test your vegetables. Yeah, but. Really? I'm not done. Let me think it. So I'm using Gabby's knife today. Yeah. Her knife's sharper than mine. She takes care of hers. Mm -hmm. I don't really sharpen mine that often. But she's got this thing about knives. I don't know what it is. I feel like they're more usable instead of like anything else really. So you don't have to struggle? Is that what it is? Yes. I feel like they're more sharper than anything really. And again, with the chicken, mm -hmm. it's just a rough, rough chop. It's not anything special. You want it to look rustic because that's what's going to give you your presentation. And then, uh, what, um, what is your favorite dish that looks very, like, amazing? I like, um, broccoli beef. Really? And, yeah, so that's what we're making tomorrow. So, uh, um, they also sell that at Walmart in the meat section. They have, um, beef strips that are already pre-cut. because uh, a lot of people don't like to handle raw meat. And so, you can do it again like we did on the barbecue. <laughs> And that's all it is. I'm gonna throw those into Gabby's stir fry. <laughs> Miguel Gomez thick. said that chicken looks thick. Go for it. I want to taste test it, Dad. Yeah, we'll put it out together. When we're done. Fine. We still gotta add the soy sauce. So this is the last step. You're just gonna add your soy sauce at the end. Keep going. Sorry, sorry. I and then uh, we don't want those to look soggy. Get underneath that and then fold it over. So Gabby hasn't learned to do the thing where they flip it with the handle. She's pretty strong. She can probably do it. But uh, we haven't practiced that one yet as a family. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Here comes the soy sauce. And there's your salt, guys. That's it. Nothing you don't else. really need any more salt because I feel like it's all. Because if you, if you do more than that, it's going to be ridiculously uh, salty. Mm. It's going to be overpowering the salt. <laughs> Let's get a close-up in there. Close-up of the chicken. Alright, so watch this. Now it's time for the plating. I'm gonna put some rice here. Okay, let me see. Okay. I like to put my rice down first. Like a mountain? Like a little mountain. Bam. Literally like 10 minutes. 
tops and you got a nice dish. Then everybody can put whatever they want on afterwards. So if they want more soy sauce, they want more spice, um, they can add that on. But um, that's it. That's basically all. And then uh, we're going to taste it in a second. You want a lot of rice or a little rice, Jeff? A lot of rice for me. Because staff eats first. How about you, lovely assistant? Um, I'll get mine in a little bit. Okay. See how fluffy that rice looks? Moist. It's pretty. Yeah, it looks like fish right now. Huh? And you will never burn it, never ruin it. Ever. Thanks to my brother. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Uncle Tutu. Thank you. Is that good? Yes, that's perfect. That's it. Grab some forks, lovely assistant. See, I told you guys, she's a veggie fan. That's really good, guys. So, it's weird. I got the saltiness of the soy sauce first, and then I felt the veggies, and then right at the end, pow! I got the, the kick from the pepper. So, um, is it really hot? It's nice, right? It just kind of creeps up on you. I wonder if that's where they got the name for Kung Pao Chicken. But, um, yeah. It's really, really good. Really, really easy. So then, now that you know how to make these, all you gotta do is look up the other ones online and just buy the ingredients. And then, if you wanna change the variation, because maybe you don't like something, you wanna add bell peppers, or you don't wanna add bell peppers, or whatever, mushrooms. Some people don't like mushrooms. Make it however you want to. Um, and, um... Can you hand me the soy sauce? Oh, so it can be like soy sauce, too. <laughs> <clears throat> Go ahead. So, um, yeah, you can make it however you want. But um, it's really quick, like you saw, and you feed a lot of people. So if you're on a budget and you need to feed uh, a busload of people, this is it, man. Asians got it down pat. Um, was there any other questions before we end our show? How about you, Jeff? You got any other questions? Or anything that we forgot? Hmm. I would still like to give away some stuff if anybody can make suggestions. Oh, yeah. So uh, our next show is going to be on Memorial Day. So it's going to be an hour long instead of half an hour because uh, we want to go over some stuff with ribs. Um, for some people, ribs are very, very difficult. And uh, so people cheat. They boil them up instead of grilling them. But you shouldn't be afraid of the grill. 
you just gotta know how to use it just like anything else and it's a tool just like anything else so um, we're gonna go over those details and how to prep your meat what kind of meat to buy what kind of cut and uh, and then at the end we're gonna enjoy some ribs with you guys I wish you guys would just come over and we can enjoy some ribs right it'd be nice to have people over during these shows but um, we'll get there eventually when we all get free so um <clears throat> oh here's a question for you guys we're struggling with the boredom okay so before we could go to the movies we could go to the park we could go wherever right but now we have to stay at home and keep safe unless we have to go to the supermarket but we're very clean about that god it's good so what do you guys do um, any suggestions? Like so, give us your suggestions. Next week, we'll pick a winner. And we also want a suggestion on what you guys want. Yeah. So I, obviously, you guys don't like gift cards. So, what can we give as prizes? And um, don't be trying to get all crazy and be like, I'm a trip to Las Vegas. No. <laughs> We're on a budget, guys. It's not going to happen. Yeah. We're in are starting out small, but we would eventually like to get to Vegas. <laughs> but, make suggestions, prizes, what you guys do when you get bored, and um, what do you want to see us cook? So, last week, I put out a, a vote um, if uh, there was anybody that wanted to learn how to cook sushi. Mm. So, we have a very dear friend of ours. He's in Utah, and um, he is from Vietnam. But uh, Thai, remember Thai? Man, Thai, and, I, and I'm not just saying this because he's my friend, but um, he makes the best sushi that I've ever tasted in my entire life. And we've been to some sushi places. So, want to tell him the funny story about your sushi experience? No. So, <laughs> we have a, a friend, his name's Andrew. <clears throat> And he took us out to sushi. <laughs> and um, so the sushi chef, uh, Gabby never had sushi before, so he wanted to, you know, test the water. So he asked Gabby, hey, if I make something for you, will you eat it? And Gabby said yes. So he started out with sashimi, and, and she had it, and she ate it. And then uh, needlefish, and she ate it. And then he made her all these rolls, and she ate it. And then at the end... He cut open a sea urchin, and she ate it. So, um, our bill was like 450 bucks. But, um, but she ate everything. Everything that he had, he, she ate it. So I was very proud of her for that, for um, trying things out. And, and uh, I think that uh, starting her that way, her palate is sophisticated. Um, somebody mentioned last week in, on Facebook that, uh, you know how... Some people just take their kids to McDonald's and buy them chicken nuggets their whole life. So then they grow up and then they don't want to eat anything because their palate is a, that of a three-year-old, right? It's more of a, uh, what was it called? It's more of a inner kind of box thing, like you're in a box. But if you start anybody really out with um, anything like... Sushi. In, or anything like that, anything out of the ordinary or like outside of the box, their palate will be different than the one inside the box. So, you want to think outside the box with your ingredients? Don't be afraid to experiment with them. I mean, because if it doesn't come out, you just, you're just not going to eat it, right? And you just won't do it again. Mm -hmm. oh. And it's not like it's going to break the bank with this stuff, you know? Well, I like... Whoa. <laughs> My voice changed. <laughs> um, what I like to do, really, is... Um, I would like to experiment with food, but if you want to get that right taste, um, you have to either put like either find a way to get the taste out of it if it's too overpowering, or put something different like that'll go mixture well together with it, like any spice. So. Um, and as you go, yeah. you learn to marry those those uh, spices together. So when we're making uh, soup. We use different ones. When we make stir-fry, we use different ones. And as we've gone, we learn how to use them and what tastes good together and what doesn't. That's spicy.
rice was hot, girl. Was that hot? I mean, it's good, but it's it's making my nose run. Uh, anyways, that concludes our show. Again, uh, we're going to put up a, a post so that you can uh, add your suggestions and tell us what you want to, what you do when you're bored, what you want as prizes, and what our next dish should be. And um, everything that you suggest, we're going to make it, okay? So if we haven't made it yet, we're not ignoring you. Um, we write everything down, and then we make it. So we'll, we'll make it as we go, and then uh, we'll see you here next week. And uh, we really thank you guys for supporting us, okay? Because um, it's uh, I don't think we've ever we would have uh, met a lot of you guys, even though it's only online. Uh, we wouldn't we wouldn't have uh, reached out to make those friendships and those bonds that we have now, right? Yeah. And um, we enjoy that you guys enjoy the show, and so uh, we appreciate your support, right? And um. want to say anything else? I know this is a live video or anything like that, but if you can, share it to your friends if you want them to see like how to make this, if they don't know how to make this or anything like that, or just probably skip to the part of the rice. <laughs> but yeah, um. Okay, love you guys. See you next week. Roger and Gabby's cooking show. Bye. If um, our lovely assistant.